So thank you all for joining us today uh, for our webinar on stretching the limits of low code. My name is Nick Sangui, and I consult with our uh, channel partners and our clients on whether working with Caspio is the right fit for them. I lead our alliances and business development efforts here at Caspio. And uh, we wanted to make today's webinar a fun and interactive experience for everyone. So please uh, head on over to the chat, uh, say hi, drop us a comment, uh, let us know where you're joining us from. Use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen as well uh, to leave us questions throughout the web, uh, event. And uh, we have made sure to have enough breaks during the webinar to cover all of your questions as well. So again, uh, thanks everyone uh, so much for being here today. Uh, let me move on to the agenda uh, that we are gonna cover today. So we have an information packed webinar for you today. I'll quickly share the agenda and then uh, get you over to our great content. Uh, so we are proud to co-host today's webinar with our partners, Work Mover. Um, we have David and Mary here who've joined us from Work Mover, and they also have invited their uh, client, Paul Hall, from Work Mover's uh, client customer, Boomerang Communications, as a guest speaker today. Uh, so, initially, I'll kick things off by sharing a quick introduction to Caspio, and then I'll turn it over to David. Uh, he's the CTO at Work Mover. He'll share some demos with us of various apps that they've built on the Caspio platform for their customers. And then we'll move on to the uh, Boomerang Communications case study uh, of a, uh, the pet portal application that Workmore has built for them. And uh, during the webinar, we'll have several question, uh, breaks for Q&A. So please keep your questions coming throughout the webinar. We'll try to do our best to get to all of them. Um, and uh, we'll also be sharing the recording of today's discussion with all the attendees once the webinar is completed. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so at Caspio, we believe in no code, no compromise. Just because you are using a low code, no code platform doesn't mean you have to compromise. But first, a quick primer for those who are new to low code, no code platforms. Uh, these are custom development platforms that leverage visual interfaces and tools to build and modify applications. Even simpler, people with zero programming knowledge are empowered to create custom applications by clicking, not coding. And uh, so, so that's great, but uh, you know, maybe some of you are wondering what are the benefits or business benefits or IT benefits of low code. And uh, there's a wide variety of benefits, but here are just some of the most important ones. Low code platforms can help you accelerate your app development by up to 20 times and reduce your project timelines and cost. Uh, they also help you expand your talent pool to junior and non-technical resources, thus reducing your dependency on scarce, highly skilled technical staff. You can thus focus on app development and leave the hosting and security to the platform. They also help you reduce technical debt and maintenance. Most importantly, they allow you to be truly agile and align your C-suite, IT, and the business. And uh, here are some essential features of low-code, no-code platforms. So they provide you with easy to use visual application development tools to develop the widgets or components of your applications, such as forms, reports, workflows, et cetera. This comes along with an integrated database as well as dash dashboarding tools that are scalable, easy to use, and tightly integrated across the platform. 
the best local tools also provide you with a guided development process that allows non-technical business users to follow simple wizards to guide them through software development best practices. And of course, uh, your local platform should have enterprise grade cloud infrastructure along with the security uh, and scalability that you need to scale your applications to your needs. You should be able to deploy your application quickly and easily to your own external and internal web properties, portals, intranets, etc. And last but not least, uh, an ideal low-code platform allows for flexible user and access management capabilities that are ideally paired with your user directory through single sign-on to keep it seamless. Needless to say, uh, Caspio provides you with all those features and more. Caspio is the first mover in no-code, and we helped define this category. Caspio is still the only no-code platform uh, that provides a fully integrated cloud database, unlimited app users and developers, and standards-based flexibility or extensibility. So just to recap these features and benefits in greater detail, we allow for unlimited app users and developers. Thus, we don't penalize you for scaling with us or growing with us. We provide enterprise-grade infrastructure running on AWS and SQL Server. With us, you build once, deploy anywhere. So you can embed your Caspio apps seamlessly on any web property with just a couple of clicks. We provide industry-leading security and compliance with HIPAA, ISO, SOC, GDPR, and other requirements. You can customize, expand, and integrate your applications with a wide variety of other enterprise applications, as we will see in the work more presentation later today. And, and finally, uh, last but not least, extending Caspio apps is easy using standards such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, and REST APIs, so that you don't have to learn any new proprietary languages. And that last point is really important for the topic of today's webinar. Caspio combines the best aspects of no-code platforms with pro-code developers like Workmore. Unlike uh, no-code app designers uh, with very limited extensibility, Caspio allows you to use pro-coders to develop applications that are tailored to your needs. Similar to traditional development, but at the speed of SaaS applications or faster while avoiding the limitations of package software. It is this flexibility that has allowed us to win over 15,000 customers of all sizes and across all verticals around the world, including some of these famous logos that you see here. And uh, many of them start using Caspio with one use case in mind, but then on realizing the power of the platform, they're able to scale it across many other functions and departments, ranging from sales and marketing to finance and operations. Uh, we are rated as one of the leading platforms in our space, not only by analysts like Forrester, but more importantly, by users like you, who leave us rave reviews on independent review sites such as G2, where we are rated as the, amongst the top 50 development products for 2022, as well as GetApp, Captera, Gartner Peer Insights, and others. And it is not hard to see why. Um, when customers compare us with our competitors, they find many of the same compelling reasons to choose us as we covered earlier today. This table and the links on this slide will allow you to drill down deeper into other factors. For example, our industry leading through 24 by seven support. 
and that brings me almost to the close of our webinar or, or sorry not our webinar but at least to the my presentation and before i turn it over to our friends at work more i just wanted to give a shout out to our brave and resilient colleagues in ukraine uh, who are weathering this terrible situation with amazing grace uh, caspio is working on supporting our colleagues and their families to the best extent possible uh, our CEO, Frank Zamani, has been on the front line in Poland for the last couple of weeks. And uh, he, along with the rest of our Poland team, have been helping out our Ukraine colleagues and their families in getting resettled. Um, and uh, we also invite ideas from uh, attendees on today's webinar for any apps for humanitarian relief that they can think of. If we find a useful app idea that can be implemented on Caspio, we'd be happy to host it for free. And so feel free to uh, chime in right now, or chat or send us an email uh, as, uh, or reach out to us via our contact us form if you have any good ideas. And with this, I wrap up my presentation. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce David Talbot, uh, CTO at Workmore. Uh, Workmore have been a long time Caspio partner, and they also hold the unique distinction of uh, having the first husband and wife couple who were Caspio certified. Uh, and so with this, uh, over to you, David. Uh, and also just as a reminder, uh, please uh, feel free to keep your questions coming throughout the webinar as you see uh, the amazing content that David has to share with us today. I think you have to give me uh, screen sharing. Nick, you need yes. to. Yeah, I, you should have it now. Sorry about that. You're on mute, David. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Nick, for your kind introduction. Uh, my name is David Talbot here in uh, sunny San Diego. And um, uh, at WorkMover, we use standard Caspio data pages and functions to get to almost the final objective of every project. But sometimes we need a little bit extra. And that's when we stretch the limits of low code. Caspio has done a super job in uh, developing and, and publicizing the low-code environment, but sometimes we think they forget the other hidden gem of Caspio, which is interconnectivity. And we use Caspio's interconnectivity capability much of the time in our stretching. So during our hour or so together, we'll go uh, ahead with some uh, uh, case studies that we've done. Uh, just to get started, um, we're going to follow these items in the webinar, the mobile apps, uh, messaging, finance, international language and integrations. And what we're going to kick off with is a little uh, poll here to see which things you're most interested in, you know, cross-platform apps, messaging. So if you'd like to take the poll, that'd be great. We'll get some uh, results in a, a minute or so. Yeah, uh, so please feel free to chime in. Uh, be, uh, you know, depending on what we see, there's most interest from the participants. Uh, we'll spend more time on those topics and less on the others. We'll, uh, so these are all the choices that you should see on your screen today. Uh, just pick uh, one or more options that you might be interested or that most interest you today. Uh, Cross-platform mobile apps, messaging via voice, email, SMS, fax, and chat, financial transactions and fintech integrations, dynamic international localizations, integrations with OnFleet, Calendly, and more, as well as the pet owner portal case study with Boomerang Communications. So I see a lot of responses have already come in. So we will be wrapping up the poll in three, two, one, and it's a wrap. And here are the results. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, the most uh, popular is the cross-platform, but all are pretty popular. Messaging, financial transactions, um, and uh, the internationalization and integrations. As I say, you know, the, all of these uh, were using the uh, Caspio interconnectivity capability. So let's get started with um, with mobile apps, okay? Now, when we look at mobile apps, we have two sort of design criteria. First, we consider a mobile app to be a user interface extension to Caspio, okay? And secondly, the design depends on how much the user wants to be involved with the system. And so we go through four different case studies that uh, go through each of these sort of characteristics. A simple web app, um, a Ionic mobile app used by administrators, and a mobile app used by patients, and an extensive native uh, Ionic cross-platform app. And uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Paul, will uh, help us out with the cross-platform app. So let's get started with a simple uh, one here. So this is for parking permits, OK? So people need to buy parking permits to park in large residential apartment complexes. The individual car owner wants absolutely minimal information and uh, interaction with the computer. They just want to park for two hours and get out of there, okay? So what we do is the people use their phone to scan a little metal wall chart on the left with a QR code, and it props up on their phone uh, this panel on the right, okay? The phone shows a simple sign-up form. They put in their credit card, press submit, and assume their credit card works, they're done and out of there. So how do we do this? Well, Caspio generates the QR code as a PDF. Uh, I think you're probably familiar with that. And then we have the simple panel here is an HTML panel. The reason we use HTML is that uh, depending on the user's iPhone security settings, there can be a little bit of uh, in incompatibility between the iPhone and uh, the data page. And so we just use HTML to avoid that frustration. And also remember that a data page only updates one uh, table at a time, and we need to update several tables here. So we use uh, Caspio's interconnectivity with uh, the Caspio REST APIs. And so a little flow chart here. As you scan, so the phone app is a, is a non-authenticated HTML page. As you uh, scan the QR code, we load in from Caspio all the static parking lot data, how much it costs, uh, how many parking spaces, that sort of thing. You put in your credit card. We go down to Stripe here uh, using uh, direct Stripe APIs, not the Caspio uh, payment gateway. We want to get back immediate confirmation that the payment was accepted. We also want to get back the uh, uh, member token and the last four of the credit card in case they come in tomorrow, they don't need to fill everything else out, okay? Assuming that the card is um, uh, accepted here for the payment, Caspio writes uh, the um, uh, information about the parking space and the person and the car and everything into, uh, into the Caspio database and Stripe writes the payment. So that's the first uh, fairly simple uh, application here. And uh, just keep on coming with questions, remember, don't, don't be shy, okay? The next one, a little bit more, okay. The case here was that people need a COVID test in order to um, attend a convention, but more importantly, so they've got the COVID test certificate to go home through passport control. A lot of international folks were coming to these conventions, okay. Again, the attendees want minimal interaction with the system, okay. So what happens, they sign up in advance usually, and uh, we SMS them a little QR code here on the right. Okay. Then they uh, come to the convention and the medical assistant uh, says to them, hey, do you have a QR code? And uh, then the process gets started. Now, the medical assistant is a full-time employee of the testing company and very much happy to be involved with the system and happy to download uh, a native mobile app. And so on the right-hand side, you see the native mobile app. So the medical assistant scans the phone QR code of the attendee and uh, assume uh, it checks in okay. 
that checks the um, attendee into Caspio. The medical assistant has a pre-labeled test strip that she uh, passes to the nurse. Now the nurse is uh, the scarce resource, so the nurse wants nothing to do with the computer. So she has the pre-validated, pre-labeled test strip, test the uh, attendee, the attendee is out of there in like less than a minute. And we needed to go to this approach because looking up people, uh, there's usually like a big uh, rush of people at the beginning, looking up people on a laptop list would just be too slow, just be really frustrating. And this works real quick because uh, it, the scan uh, uh, of the QR code just checks everyone in without data entry. So let's have a look here at what we have. So here again, um, the, uh, the, uh, the attendee has just the HTML pages or actually the SMS with the QR code. The medical assistant has an authenticated native Ionic app. So in the morning, the medical assistant logs into Caspio using the mobile app as her user interface, okay? Uh, then when someone comes along, an attendee comes along, she scans here, and assuming uh, that the person is properly registered, we update all the attendee information from the uh, native mobile app through into the uh, uh, Caspio database. Next case study, pretty similar, okay? In the, we are, remember we said we're always interested in how much the individual wants to be involved with the system. Well, medical condition monitoring is something that's uh, uh, very useful in um, uh, chronic disease like depression, heart disease, emphysema, those sorts of things. And during the pandemic, the idea of uh, remote telemedicine has become much more accepted facet of, of healthcare. So here, the, uh, the patient is very much involved with their doctor and with their condition and happy to download a mobile app. And so this is how it works. Um, similar in some ways to the, uh, the medical assistant. The, in the morning, the patient logs onto Caspio using her phone app as uh, the user interface. And then she fills out a form, just a simple form on the phone app, which is a, a depression form in this case, it's called a PHQ-9 uh, form. And when she's finished, she uh, clicks go and uh, it updates into Caspio. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the technology here. For the mobile apps, we use Ionic language. The Ionic language uh, runs on both Android and iPhone. And uh, then both the medical assistant and the patient here can then just download the app from the app store. And uh, so it's real convenient here. And remember that uh, we do not have anything stored on the phone, okay? The phone itself is, um, uh, is just a, a user interface. Nothing is on the phone. Now, one thing we've done in these uh, first, well, in, in all of our standard uh, mobile apps is we assume internet connection, okay? In WorkMover, internet connection for mobile apps is our standard. We've done custom projects with disconnected working, not quite as necessary now with rollout of 5G and everything like that, but it's quite a lot more complicated because we had to put a database on the tablet, okay? And then we had to do check-in and check-out of work orders, uh, synchronization back and concurrency checks. So uh, we're talking here in our standard mobile apps continuous internet connection. Uh, in a custom, we can do disconnected, uh, but it's quite a lot more work. Okay. So how are we doing on questions here, Nick? We uh, have any questions? Uh, yes, we do have a couple of them. So uh, first question, I guess, is from Dustin Boss, who says, when you say mobile app, is this the mobile browser or an actual app from the app store? And yes. I assume it is the latter, but I'll let you clarify. Yes, it is. Yeah, we write um, we write the app in the Ionic language, and then we uh, we have a, an a, an app. Or, talk about the Apple side to start off with, and we'd have the similar for Google. But we um, we upload the app into uh, first into test flight, and then uh, get it approved, and then it comes down from the App Store as a regular standard um, uh, mobile phone app. Got it. 
And then there's one from Canute Fernandez. Uh, would it be possible to see an actual mobile app testing case? Uh, this is not very clear, Canute, if you can act, uh, clarify further. Uh, these are all actual mobile apps. They, they are live yeah, these, the are, these are all working. These are all working apps. Uh, we decided not to try and do it during this uh, seminar because then you've got to have the phone backwards and forwards a little bit awkward. But we do have uh, some videos and we can also do you a one on one um, demo where you can uh, uh, we, we can send you like the QR code and then we can show you the app and, and whatever. So we can certainly do a, a working demo of this. And um, uh, my coworker, Mary, will um, uh, type her email address into the chat here. And you can just email Mary for a, a demo. But during a seminar like this, with phones going back and forth the screens, it gets a little bit um, disconnected. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now what we've done here is uh, we've had relatively simple mobile apps. And then what I'd like to do is introduce my uh, esteemed colleague, uh, Paul, here. He um, designed uh, this uh, very much. Uh, big footprint, multiple screen, uh, multiple data sources uh, app, and we did some coding for him on this. And so Paul, uh, let me turn it over to you and you can talk about your pet portal app. Great, thanks David, I appreciate it. At Boomerang Communications, we pull data from veterinary hospitals and clinics across the country and send out reminders for them, letting pet owners know the vaccines and services that their pet needs. But we also needed a way to give pet owners ongoing access to information about their pets. So we loaded our data in Caspio and worked with David's team to build a pet owner portal. So there's our reminders and then there's a pet owner portal that, that we added to that. However, we found that we needed a full mobile app like our competitors have. In fact, we needed one that is even better. So over the past year, David's team help us, helped us extend our initial Caspio portal and build the most advanced multi-device app in our industry. Here is the home screen showing the owner uh, their pets and any alerts of upcoming or past due items. When the owner taps on one of their pets, they get a detailed information uh, about the vaccines, the visits, the lab reports, the medications, et cetera, and the owner can easily request an appointment for a given pet for a given service. This app delivers more complete information than competing apps, but in the industry, not all pet owners actively access information to keep their pets health healthy. They just don't take the time or effort to do the login or the install to get to the information. So we need to eliminate the barriers to engagement. We needed a single all device solution for all pet owners of the clinic, not just those, an app for those that wanted to, to, to do the install, but also the same app experience and info, even for everyone else, right at their fingertips. By creating the app with Ionic built on Caspio, David's team has given our clinics and pet owners this progressive web app, all device solution. Somebody uh, asked in the chat if this was a, an installed app or a browser app? Well, in this case, it's both. We needed uh, to be able to deploy on, on all uh, platforms and all devices. So it's very easy. With one click, we can put each member, uh, each, each uh, one click that we put in each reminder, the pet owner can go straight to their pet information without a login, and that's revolutionary for them. We're now beefing up the visual design further, but already WorkMover has created an app that is very intuitive and the easiest and most functional in the vet industry. And Caspio provides us with a full capability, connectable, extendable platform that we can scale with. David's team has been great to work with. Thank you, David, for all your help. Okay, it's been a, a good experience of friendship. Yeah, the, uh, the great advantage of Ionic is that uh, Obviously, you can imagine there's quite a lot of logic in here. And uh, so we didn't need to write a totally separate app for a web page compared to uh, the tablet or whatever. We could use all the same logic because uh, Ionic is a cross-platform language. OK, uh, any more questions on? Uh... Yeah, there are okay. a couple of questions uh, that have come up. So 
This one is from Douglas Baker, and I can take part of the question. And David, feel free to add uh, if you have more context. So Doug is asking when it comes to authentication, a Caspio API docs claim that passwords are not accessible through the API. So how do you interact with passwords and Caspio authentications? Are passwords saved as hash text or something similar? And uh, so, uh, so yeah, of course, passwords are encrypted and they are stored as hash text uh, in our database. So they can only be managed through the Caspio authentication uh, uh, tables. And uh, so passwords can be reset or changed, but they cannot be looked up, uh, not even from the Caspio side. So that's uh, part of the question. And maybe, David, do you want to add any additional flavor to it as in uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to get to the coding level here, um, I think that's something we should do one on one. But basically, remember, we said at the beginning that we consider the mobile app to be a user interface extension to Caspio. So basically, you log in uh, to Caspio using the user interface of the mobile app. But if you want to go into uh, the coding of it, we're happy to share that with you. But that's probably uh, a one on one sort of discussion. And then um, a couple of other questions. One is from Tony. He's asking, have you considered uh, adding instant video to your apps? And is that a possibility? Um, we, don't have, uh, we don't have video at the moment. We have lots of pictures you can see from the, uh, from one of the things that's nice about the, uh, the app for the pets is that you actually upload the picture of your own pet. Um, we haven't had a requirement for video. I don't see that will be much different, but uh, um, you know, again, we could easily do a little test on that, but uh, it looks to be a pretty uh, simple thing to do. We, David, we've I think used there might all be an the other sort of uh, mobile features. We just haven't, uh, you know, we just haven't had a need for video. David, uh, the way that we set up the pet picture capture uh, program, it it has the ability to be able to take a video of a pet maybe that's suffering or uh, experiencing a certain condition, and that can be uploaded, I think, through the same pet uh, uh, picture capture program. You can upload video that way, but we can test it and see. Yeah, yeah. So probably can, but we haven't actually got a working example of that. Right. And then there's one more question on the Ionic code itself. Can, um, can it be downloaded and customizations can be done uh, to it outside of Caspio? Oh yeah, actually it's, uh, it's totally separate, you know, so we have our code in Bitbucket. And um, uh, so there are two components to this really. One is the Caspio to phone API set. And the second is the actual navigation and everything on the screen. So when the screen needs something from Caspio, it goes to the APIs. And, uh, but you know, when you have all the data and you're just navigating on the screen, that's in Ionic. So, uh, so the Ionic app is really a custom app. You know, the standard uh, part that we um, is come standard is the APIs from Caspio to Ionic. Great. Yeah, I think we've covered all open questions okay. as of now. You can continue. Okay. So let's go on to uh, on to messaging here. Um, what we want to do at, uh, at WorkMover is that all interactions with a customer should all be in one place. And that's documents, comments, phone, uh, emails, SMSs, faxes, all in a single place here. So we needed to do a voice and a fax extension of Caspio. And this is the, the voice one here. You can see here, the way that works is that we use Caspio's interconnectivity to Twilio to add pretty much complete call center capability to Caspio. And here you see, this is a standard Caspio data page here. A call came in and uh, Olga was calling in. So we matched her with the, uh, with the Caspio database, picked up her information, looked out to uh, Google Maps to find out which time there was a local time. And then on the bottom here, you have the, uh, uh, the buttons that control the voice. So you control the whole voice call with buttons in your standard Caspio data page. So you don't have to go out to Twilio here. So again, Twilio is merely a voice extension to Caspio. And uh, Caspio has all the, all, the, all the screens of Caspio. 
and all the data is in Caspio recordings, uh, transcripts, uh, you know, the call routing parameters. The only thing that's in um, uh, Twilio is the phone number, okay, that you call in. And so the voice features, uh, pretty much standard, inbound, outbound, routing, uh, the pop-up, which you just saw, it's worldwide inbound and outbound with, and we put all the country calling codes in so you don't have to look them up. Uh, we have recording and transcripts from Twilio, but then Caspio grabs those instantaneously. So all the quarter recordings and transcripts are in, in, in uh, Caspio. You can, you know, if you get a missed call, you record a message and that, that recording goes into Caspio and Caspio generates a notification that you've got a missed call. We have uh, routing to extension. You know, if you know your party's extension, you can dial it any time. Uh, the voice prompts are pretty clever. Uh, not clever from us, but clever from uh, Caspio and Twilio. So uh, Caspio sends a text uh, string to Twilio, and Twilio has a little uh, component that converts it into a very pleasant voice. You know, this call will be recorded for training purposes. And then for the um, call center operator, they have a little toggle so they can be accepting calls or on a break. So those are the sort of voice features here. Any, any notes or questions on the voice features? Okay, so the other one we needed to do was, was fax, okay? And uh, surprisingly, uh, S fax is still very, very popular. Um, again, we use SR fax as our extension of Caspio uh, to the fax machines. Uh, all the data pages are all uh, in Caspio. So this is sort of like a, a, a fax data page here. And all the data, outbound faxes, uh, attachments, everything like that is stored in Caspio. The only thing that's in SR fax is the, um, uh, is the, is the fax number. And so the way this works is that you put in uh, like a cover sheet and then you can attach several documents. Usually you want a cover sheet and a document so you can attach documents as PDFs. Uh, Caspio APIs merge all those together and send them out to SR Fax. SR Fax is HIPAA compliant uh, because most of our fax activity is with uh, the medical uh, environment. And um, then after the fax has uh, been sent, we check that it was positively uh, received by the, by the fax machine and uh, you know, store all the data back in, in Caspia. So facts are pretty straightforward, um, and, uh, but we use this actually quite a lot you know, because we need to get medical records from hospitals and things like that. So any notes on, on faxes? Not, not as popular. I was hoping the fax machines would all be gone away by 1995, but they still, they still hang on. In the rest of messaging, we don't use um, Caspio's SMS and email. We needed to do a few little extensions of that. So for email, we have inbound and outbound with uh, uh, matching of the email address. Um, we can put in attachments, both inbound and outbound. We use Amazon AWS for um, uh, our email. Uh, it's called Simple Email Service, and um, we're in we're in Amazon AWS a lot, as you can imagine, being, uh, doing connectivity. And so this is convenient for us. For SMS, we, uh, we need worldwide. So we go to Twilio for SMS. Again, inbound and outbound SMSs uh, with, attach with attachments and worldwide. So, uh, and so those are the messaging features, but primarily it's uh, uh, the extensions of voice and fact. So any questions on the on the messaging? Okay. In finance, we have uh, quite a few finance uh, activities, but our most popular is credit card subscriptions, credit, periodic credit card subscriptions. So let's go through the flow as an example here, okay? So say I want to be a member of the San Diego Canoe Club for $15 a month. So what we do here in Caspio, we insert a Caspio subscription plan entity of Canoe Club, $15 a month. And Caspio REST APIs are clever enough to write that down as a mirror in Stripe. 
then here I am, I'm a canoeist, I come in, I've got my non-authenticated HTML page, just like with the parking place at the beginning. And I say, hey, this is a good deal, $15 a month. I put in my credit card and we validate the credit card uh, in Stripe. And then we create in Caspio, a Caspio subscription instance, which is a match of the plan and me, okay? So this is David, a uh, member of the Canoe Club. And then Caspio REST APIs are clever enough to uh, update that subscription instance in, uh, in, in, in Stripe. Also, we send an email to the uh, canoeist here and they can do a, uh, with a standard Caspio app to uh, reset password and they can update their subscription instance and buy sort of canoe paraphernalia uh, directly through the uh, through a laptop app. Now, interesting, you'll see there's no arrow between the subscription instance and Stripe, okay? And the reason is we delegate all the monthly or periodic processing, can be weekly, quarterly, those sorts of things, but all the processing we delegate to Stripe, okay? So we don't have to, in Caspio, we don't have to say, okay, you know, uh, January 12th, February 12th, March 12th, uh, need to charge the credit card, okay? But that does leave a gap, okay? So Caspio doesn't know that we just charge the March 12th uh, payment. And so what we do is pretty convenient. Within the Stripe environment, we put in a webhook. And so as Stripe uh, writes the March 12th payment, we grab that with a webhook and that webhook uh, it goes to one of our programs that like a moment later writes that payment back into Caspio. So again, we have everything back in, uh, in Caspio in the subscription environment. A any questions there on, uh, on credit card subscriptions? This is our most popular finance uh, component. Okay. International currency. Uh, international currency is standard throughout Workmover. All our transactions are uh, in international currency. Uh, you can check a checkbox if you don't want to show international currency and we just hide it, okay? What we wanted to do here was to, uh, as you put in a transaction uh, on a certain transaction date, we wanted to get the, uh, the same transaction in multiple currencies and on the closing date of the, the closing price for that transaction date. And we've used this, for example, in portfolio management and things like that, okay? And it's actually uh, quite simple. As we put in the transaction, we run out to a company called uh, uh, Fixer and that looks up all the closing prices. And also, it also has intraday pricing for uh, folks who are doing a lot of transactions and puts in the uh, transaction rates and, uh, and amounts for all the international currencies. So we wanted to have this as a standard because it's not that frequently used, but it means that when we do have to do it, we don't have to retrofit. So we do have uh, international currency. And I'll talk about this a little bit later on with the make or buy. Fixer is just $10 a month. I mean, it's uh, amazingly good, uh, amazingly good uh, value there. And so in our finance functions, Stripe, we don't use the Caspio uh, payment gateway. Stripe is our primary credit card processor, and, um, but some people are not accepted by Stripe, and so we use Square. Square is identical technically and functionally to Stripe. So we talked about one-time credit card payments with the Parkers, the repetitive subscription with the Canoeists, the webhook, with coupons, Again, we delegate coupons to Stripe. We prefer to uh, have Stripe do the arithmetic. We put in a coupon entity of a certain, you know, 10% uh, uh, off for the first 30 days type thing. And then uh, we put that into Caspio. It mirrors it down into Stripe. And then Stripe does the arithmetic, you know, the fixed amount percentage. They've got several different um, coupon uh, types, like first 60 days first 30 signups, and then Stripe brings back to Caspio the original list price, which coupon was used, what the coupon discount was, and the final amount charged. So it works out really well to delegate the coupons uh, to the Stripe uh, uh, functions. In the United States, uh, the subprime credit card market is pretty um, uh, vibrant. And so we use alternate payment processes for those folks 
who uh, perhaps couldn't uh, qualify for an American Express card. Um, Pineapple, yes, at USA ePay, PayHub, um, not household names, but actually quite large companies. And so, for instance, we can use a prepaid credit card uh, for a subscription with USA ePay. So don't underestimate the subprime market. And so we have, uh, we wanted to have a way of tackling that. PayPal, the Caspio REST API's configuration can send and receive money through PayPal. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We talked about international currency. In the FinTech area, the financial technology area, there are lots of companies with just a Astonishing venture capital valuations, amazing. And uh, for FinTech, we use Plaid and it does uh, lots of functions, bank and loan balances, uh, um, uh, credit scores, those sorts of things, Dun & Bradstreet numbers, um, and also bank account transactions. We, not super popular, but uh, in the lender borrower environment, that's, um, uh, that's quite important, okay. And then uh, ACH transactions, ACH automatic clearing house is um, uh, United States bank to bank money transfer system. So those are our finance functions. And uh, do I have any questions on uh, subscriptions, uh, international currency finance, uh, anything like that? So we did receive one question. Uh, it's not on finance still, but it's on uh, Twilio. Uh, can you talk about how you connect Twilio with Caspio? Yeah, Twilio, uh, one of the things you're going to talk about a little bit more uh, with external service providers, what they've done is they've made their API sets easy for programmers so that the programmers, because then, you know, the chief technology officer doesn't have a bunch of uh, disgruntled programmers. So it really is just REST API connection backwards and forwards. So, you know, you'll have several transaction types. So you'll have a transaction type that says, yes, I'm available for calls. No, I'm on break. You'll have a transaction that is an inbound call um, that goes from Twilio and activates through Amazon AWS, uh, a REST API into Caspio. You'll have another transaction, which is to do a call recording. And so it's, it's just a series of, uh, you know, maybe 15 individual API transactions that link uh, Twilio to uh, pretty seamlessly to, um, uh, to Caspio. So as an end user, the only thing you need to put into Caspio is the phone number. Everything else is taken care of with uh, the Caspio database. Does that answer that? Uh, and you know, again, we, we didn't do a demo of uh, the call here because it's pretty awkward, you know, because you've got the phone on one side and whatever, but if you want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we can do a, a, a demo of that, uh, the calling. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Okay, international language and localizations. Now, Caspio has super uh, internationalization with um, the localizations. Um, there are different circumstances. One of the uh, things with localizations in Caspio is that you need a different copy of the data page for each language. So if you have a couple of languages or more, uh, three or four languages, and you need um, three or four data pages, you end up with a lot of data pages. So what we do here, we have the little flags at the top. And so if you click on the French flag, what we do, we, we reload the data page. And as we do it, we have a JavaScript component that scans for all the labels on the data page. It then looks up in a cached phrase library or the French equivalents and displays the French equivalents. And so as you click the flags from like English to Russian to Korean here, it just redisplays the data page in that language, okay? But part of the reason I brought this up is that there's uh, quite a lot of JavaScript here and we didn't want to copy all that JavaScript into a data page because, or especially several data pages, because first of all, it makes the data page look sort of daunting. And secondly, it means that if you have a change, you've got to go and change it in all the data pages. So what we do, we use app parameters for about a dozen of very common uh, items that you would do in JavaScript that are in multiple pages. And uh, App Parameters has, uh, is good and bad. First of all, it's really quick and it's in every data page. 
Um, not perfect as a code repository, it doesn't have check-in or check-out, but if you're careful with this, um, app parameters is a super place to uh, store blocks of uh, JavaScript. And so if you wanted to add um, the internationalization JavaScript to a data page, it doesn't have to be one of the data pages we wrote. You just uh, copy in about a 20 character um, uh, reference back to, uh, uh, back to app parameters and immediately you know, you're activated on the internationalization. So um, any, any notes here on, on app parameters and, uh, and JavaScript? Okay. This is the slide you've all been waiting for, my last slide. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, if you want a one on one, I love to talk. So uh, just check in with Mary and uh, you know, I'll carry on for hours here. We use a lot of external service providers. And when we look at external pro service providers, we look at them through the make or buy uh, lens. Okay, Is it better to code the feature or to buy it off the shelf? Now we've got a couple of case studies here where we did similar projects, one like three or four years ago and one more recently, okay? The same, uh, same case study, and we got two examples of that. So the first was scheduling technicians or, and uh, you know, three or four years ago was, um, was nurses. And so what we did, uh, we needed to have nurses go to a house and so we did a lot of Caspio JavaScript, a lot in Google Maps to get, you know, remember, you know, so we could store the routing and all that sort of stuff, you know, how much uh, driving time and uh, traffic jams and things like that. And it worked pretty well, but it was a lot of JavaScript. And, uh, and more recently, we had a similar situation with deliveries. And so we said, let's have a look and see if there's anything else available here. And remember, there's a lot more available now in external service providers than there were like uh, three or four years ago. And so we, we focused in on OnFleet and, um, and OnFleet, uh, the way that works is that um, uh, we took us about a couple of days to connect Caspio APIs to OnFleet APIs. Okay, so where it works is in Caspio, you get a new driver or the driver changed their driver's license expiration date or something like that. We put that into Caspio and uh, then Caspio REST APIs are clever enough to uh, mirror those updates into OnFleet. We then have a task that we need to send uh, a, a driver to do. And so we put the task into Caspio and it puts it into OnFleet. Then the the driver has an Uber driver looking, it's not Uber driver, but it looks just like an Uber driver app. And uh, the driver says, oh, I see this uh, new task. I can do that one and clicks on the task in the OnFleet mobile app. And then OnFleet then updates that back into Caspio. And then the, uh, in the central office, they have two screens. One is the Caspio sort of tabular list of which drivers, which uh, tasks and the status. And on the second screen, we use the geographic uh, on-fleet uh, representation here, and you can update in either side to either side. So you can assign a task from the geographic uh, map screen here in on-fleet and it updates and vice versa. And let's have a look from the make or buy decision. So it's two days for us to uh, do the APIs and then on-fleet's $400 a month. So economically, in, in not in all cases, but in some cases, uh, it makes sense to uh, do a buy and do off the shelf. The other one was uh, an appointment setting thing. Again, we used the, you know, three or four years ago, we used the excellent uh, Caspio calendar uh, representation with a lot of JavaScript to do appointments, you know, update appointments, everything like that. And it worked pretty well. The big simplification was that um, we didn't, it was all one time zone. And in the United States, time zones are a big effort because you have, um, uh, you know, Tennessee and, and Florida have different time zones. Part of Indiana has a different time zone to the rest. Arizona doesn't change to summertime unless you're on the Navajo reservation when it does. So we thought we don't want to do all the time zone uh, uh, calculations. What else is available? So we went to Calendly. Again, Calendly did everything, the uh, appointments, the time zones, the you know, appointment conflicts and all that sort of stuff. 
took us a couple of days to connect Caspio to Calendly. And we had three nurses who were doing the uh, administration and they each needed a Calendly uh, subscription of $15 a month. So for this particular project, we had two days of uh, API work and $45 a month to run the system. So in that case, the buy decision was good. Not all cases, remember, I did a, um, a, a huge trash um, incinerator project some time ago, and we had all sorts of uh, strange ceramic phase diagrams. That sort of thing, you've got to do a make, you can't do a buy. So external service providers, we use a lot. We talked about Stripe, Square, OnFleet, Canly, do a lot with Google Maps um, uh, and analytics and AdWords. FedEx, we go direct to FedEx because it's popular. For other freight rates, and again, make or buy, the US, the US Post Office has terrible API set. Um, all the ship engine has all the rates for all the different carriers. You can ask ship engine how much to send a, a package. And for two cents, they give you five comparative freight rates. ACH works, uh, takes care of all the administration with ACH. You know, uh, Caspio now has um, a legal document signature thing. We've historically used DocuSign um, and only for legal documents. For regular documents like billing, bill of ladings and stuff, we use the Caspio uh, uh, signature block. So those are our external service providers. Okay. Any questions on that? We're going to have um, uh, an extended question period at the end. And so what we've done here over the past three years is we've uh, gone through all these components and put them together into a working code set that's operational. We use it internally for our own administration. And so if you'd like to have a look at that, we'd be delighted, uh, you know, just email Mary. And uh, this, you know, all the components here are available at modest cost to end users. And as I said, I love to chat. So um, if you needed a one-on-one, -on -one, we'd be delighted. So Nick, thanks very much for this opportunity. And uh, we'll open up for Nick and for extended questions. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, uh, David and Paul. Uh, great content. Uh, I already saw a lot of comments coming in. Uh, saying that uh, folks enjoyed uh, the content, uh, especially the mobile app piece, it seems uh, was really interesting for folks. Uh, and uh, so uh, everyone uh, here, we have a couple of minutes. Feel free to uh, chime in with your questions if you'd like us to get address, uh, you know, address them live. Otherwise, uh, Mary and David have shared their contact information in the chat window. We will also include that as part of the follow-up email um, should you want to reach out to them. And uh, so we hope you all got some great takeaways from today's webinar. Uh, and thanks everyone for attending, commenting, sharing your questions. Um, we will, as discussed, we will be sharing the webinar recording once it is ready and host it on our website. And uh, if there's no other questions, uh, as the webinar ends, you will see a brief survey. Please let us know your feedback uh, so that we can improve this experience for you going forward. And uh, as a final reminder, you can visit us at www.caspio.com to check us out if you've not already done so. And you can visit WorkMover at www.workmover, that is W-O-R-K-M-O-V-R.com uh, to check them out as well. And uh, again, th uh, special thanks to all our wonderful panelists and speakers. So uh, I think we are right on time and I don't see any other uh, open questions. Uh, so thanks, everyone, and uh, have a great day. Bye.